Now for those of you who have been following along on our Moroccan adventures so far, you'll know that we've taken a slightly unusual route around the country. We started off going down the west coast along the Atlantic and then we cut inside and we went right up to the northern tip of the country to Tangier. We did that because we were going to visit family, but we still wanted to explore a bit down south. So we left our van in Marrakesh. We've now been reunited with the van, and this morning we are leaving Marrakesh. We're heading to a place called Wazazat, but in order to do that, we have to cross back over the Atlas Mountains, which we crossed in the other direction a couple of weeks ago. However, in between us traveling this way over them and now wanting to go back over them, there's been a massive weather event which has left loads of villages around there completely inaccessible. Basically, they are completely snowed in. There is meters and meters of snow. Part of the road that we're intending to take was also closed. However, we believe that the road is now open. We think it's been cleared and we've checked the weather and it actually looks pretty sunny and quite warm. So, we think that it's going to be all right to go. We're not 100% sure because there's no real way of checking. However, Google Maps says that the road's fine. We've asked around a few people and they said that it is now open. So we're going to take our chances and head down back over the Atlas Mountains. First of all, we've got to actually try and get out of Marrakesh though. The map keeps taking us down routes where the van won't actually fit so we keep having to turn around in like the narrowest little streets um, and it's not kind of rerouting us to enable us to get out a different way um, so we're just having to try loads of different ways to try and get out and the traffic is so busy and obviously we're quite a big vehicle um, so we're really trying to not bump into anyone or like knock into anyone because it's not only just like cars and horses and bikes there's also just like pedestrians all over the road and people everywhere um yeah not um an ideal start to what might potentially be quite a stressful journey anyway you all right yeah i'm fine <laughs> i've got ice in my veins mate <laughs> jay is so cool when it comes to driving on these roads like he just takes it all in his stride he doesn't phase him um there is no way on earth that I could drive around a city so busy like this. Well, so far so good. I think we're about an hour and a quarter in away. Yeah. Um, and we've not come across any problems so far. Um, a few places where the road's been rebuilt, um, but that's not from recent um, recent issues. They're just kind of needing to cut the road deeper into, into the mountain. Um, so yeah, we've got about another 45 minutes, I reckon, until we get to the top of the mountain pass, we think. And the weather still seems absolutely fine. A little bit windy, maybe? Um, but yeah, it's sunny, so fingers crossed that this snow is disappearing. Okay, looks like we are getting into the snow. How are you feeling? Excited. This looks amazing. The scenery just looks incredible. <laughs> definitely been a lot of snow up here like it's piled up just at the side of the road still um, we were told though that even though snow feels quite a lot more extreme than rain it's much better in terms of driving and for the roads because it melts more slowly um, so for landslides and rocks falling down and stuff like that um, it does make for better driving conditions Okay, we just got to the place where we thought we were maybe going to stop to grab some lunch but the weather just doesn't look great at all like it's raining um, and the yeah. sky is just white like completely white you can't even where the like mountain has snow on it and meets the sky like you can't tell any difference it's just like white all the way up <laughs> um, so yeah we are just gonna try and get down off the mountain as quick as we can we just got stopped at a police checkpoint then 
Um, I think that's only actually the second time that that's happened to us, right? Uh, yeah, second or third. Yeah. Probably second, yeah. It doesn't happen very often. Um, we normally just get waved through. Um, and we've never actually been asked for our documents or anything. Um, it's usually just that the police are wanting to practice English, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we just had a bit of a chat with him. Um, he said... The, the road is clear it's absolutely fine um, obviously it can be a little bit dangerous in places just because it is a mountain road and there are sheer drops off the side so obviously watch what you're doing make sure you own your seatbelts etc etc um, but yeah in terms of the snow it's absolutely fine so we're just carrying on down well we're definitely down the other side yeah. The snow's gone. Yeah, absolutely. And the sun's coming out. It's nice and warm, huh? <laughs> eh? Well, we've arrived. This seems all right. Very nice campsite, yeah. And the weather is great, as we said before. <laughs> the van, on the other hand, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Properly filthy. <laughs> We'd have to give that a wash pretty soon, I think. This was the first campsite that we came to coming off the mountain, so that's basically why we decided to head here. Um, but we read in the reviews that they do amazing tagines. Um, like someone said that it was the best that they'd had in Morocco, so we were like, okay, yeah, we're definitely going to go there. We skipped lunch, so we were super excited, absolutely starving when we got here. Um, unfortunately, they don't do any food until 7 pm, so. That's a little bit disappointing. However, we're going to have one later and Jay is currently cooking up a storm in the kitchen. What are you making over there? Just some pasta. <laughs> we haven't got much in to be quite honest. So <laughs> make do with what we've got. It smells amazing. So when Jay says he's just cooking a pasta, this is what's going on. It's not just a pasta. Like... Really very simple food. <laughs> <laughs> it's tomatoes sauce made from scratch mate like yeah. you know it's not out of the jar i think that's banging it's one of my favorite foods anyway the main reason that we have come to this area is to visit this fantastic village that is behind us right now. It's called Ait Ben Hadou. We stayed about 10 minutes in a campsite away from here last night, so it was a really quick and easy journey to get here. And we have got here bright and early to try and avoid the crowds. If you recognise this place, it's probably because it has got a long history of being featured in some of the biggest films that have been made. So everything from Lawrence of Arabia to Marco Polo, right through to more modern films like The Mummy and Gladiator, and we're going to explore it right now but first of all we have got to get over there because from where we are standing now over to the village is a river in between and if you can see behind me there's some people climbing over on some stepping stones um, one of them's just gone in the drink so <laughs> we <laughs> definitely not going to be attempting that with AD um, there seems to be a bridge a bit further back but there's also a donkey there so we're gonna go speak to the guy see how much that is and see if the donkey will take us over We made it across, it was a bit of a bumpy ride. <laughs> it was, it was fine once we were in the river, it was just yeah. getting down into it and then coming up the other side, like <laughs> up and down the banks. Um, but really cool experience. <laughs> it was, Andy loved it as well, she was just like, wow. <laughs> This fortified village used to act as a stopping point for caravans travelling between the Sahara Desert and Marrakesh. It's immediately really obvious why so many film and TV productions have been made here, because it is just beautiful. And drenched in the morning sun, it is effortlessly cinematic. We have just walking past this um, little painting shop and the guy outside said, do you want to come in and see the technique? Because we were looking at them and they look really great. And he showed us the most incredible painting technique that we have ever seen. It is using tea and saffron to colour the painting. And then what he does is holds it over a flame which caramelises the sugar in the tea. Out of nowhere just appears this incredible image. It's absolutely amazing. And he said that it used to be used for writing secret messages and they've now adopted it to actually start making these paintings from. Just absolutely beautiful. 
What do you reckon? I love it. Like, honestly, I could buy them all. Like, they're <laughs> so, so lovely. Um, but yeah, we've got one for the van. Like, we've got a spot in mind that we're gonna gonna put it on. Um, and we've actually been looking for some artwork for there for yes. a while, and this is just absolutely perfect. Love absolutely. it. Absolutely. We haven't even mentioned yet what is the most incredible thing about this place either and that is that it's made of mud so there are little bits of straw and stone and stuff in the um in the, the walls of the buildings but at the end of the day it is just still mud and we've just come across some of the bricks here that are used to construct the buildings it's just really incredible um so the actual village or settlement there's been a settlement here for around a thousand years um but most of the buildings that are currently here have i say only only been here since the 17th century um, but they're still like hundreds of years old just stood here in the sun the rain whatever weather made of mud how amazing is that we grabbed a cuppa in a tea house that had the most spectacular views over the valley and spent the afternoon just marveling at the amazing surroundings Well, what an incredible place. That was such an amazing visit. It was so much fun. I just like the history of the place as yeah. well. Like you could really feel it like wandering around. And I don't know, I just loved all the like little intricate bits. Like mm. to say it's just mud. Like I keep going on about this, it's mud. But like all the little carvings and yeah. like, I can't get over the like the windows and the doors in it and stuff. Like yeah, just yeah, really, really incredible. And that has got to be probably the most famous Berber village in the whole of Morocco, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. All that is left to do now is call our horse, or mule, not a horse, yeah. call Saffron and get us back across the river, right? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, see you. We have just parked up in Wazazat and we are on a very special mission because about 500 of you said in the comments on a couple of our videos that I look like I am from Wazazat. I've got two places, Marrakesh and Wazazat, so we decided to visit them both and see which one I look like I come from more. And I have to say, we'd just been to the supermarket and as I was wandering around, I was looking at people's faces very closely and I already think that I look like I'm from here. Was it like looking in a mirror? A lot of people it was, yeah. It was like looking at my brothers, it was amazing. <laughs> One of the main attractions in Wazazat is this gorgeous kasbah. Like Ait Ben Hadou, it was also used as a caravan stopping point along the same route and is also heavily fortified. We learned that this was because the goods that would travel up and down the route were extremely valuable, meaning there were plenty of people wanting to steal them. We took a really interesting guided tour, which is pretty much a necessity here because it's laid out like a rabbit warren and boasts over 300 separate rooms, including living quarters, guest rooms, reception areas, and much, much more. Without our guide, we'd probably still be trying to find our way out. Now, because so many films and TV programs are made here, this place is actually known as the Hollywood of Africa. And this is the artisanal souk behind me. And even this looks like a film set. Everything looks like it's actually props, but it's real stuff and it just looks incredible. We love the look of these doors behind me. Sarah just asked, do you reckon we could fit one in the van? Well, we have had a very quick squiz around Wazazat and it seems like a really interesting place. There seem like a lot of fun things to do. We were going to go and look at one of the film studios because there are three pretty large film studios here and there's also a film museum. However, we read some of the reviews and they were less than complimentary. So we don't think we will bother. It's definitely somewhere that we'd love to spend a bit more time exploring, but we're just very short on time at the moment. We've got about three weeks left in Morocco and we need to get further down south and then all the way back up north to catch our ferry. One thing that I will say about Wazazat is that I can definitely confirm I look like I'm from here. I've seen so many people that have very similar features, very similar hair, very similar skin tone to me here. Probably a higher percentage than I've seen elsewhere in Morocco. So 
Any one of you who said that I look like I'm from Wazazat, absolutely spot on. I completely agree. The guy just gave us a really nice welcome at this campsite. He yeah. just said, go in, have a look around, park wherever you want, just be careful of the mud. And then he said, come back over here, I'll show you where the toilets are. We've got a restaurant, you can take some tea, da 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 da, da. It's got a lovely feel about this place. So yeah, happy to be here and rested because it feels like it's been a really busy day. Well, this has been one of our very favorite park ups in Morocco so far. And there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, it is in absolutely beautiful surroundings. We are just on the outskirts of Wazazat and this campground is covered in and surrounded by date palms, which are laden with fruit. So it's absolutely beautiful and it provides a lot of great shade as well. And a lot of the buildings and structures are very traditional and made out of mud. So it was really nice to, to see that. But the second reason is that we were able last night to have some really interesting in chats with one of the guys who works here called Ayub and he is Amazigh and he gave us some really interesting information on the history and the culture and just some points of view that we haven't really heard expressed before since we've been in Morocco so it's been a really illuminating stay here and we've absolutely loved it. You two ready to go? We are ready. Are you? I think so yeah. Do you want to tell people the plan for today? Do we know the plan for today? Um, the plan is to drive east. We're okay. heading towards the east. Is that enough of the plan? <laughs> I think so, yeah. I mean let's get let's let's just let's just start driving. There's this thing that we've been seeing over in the distance of been, as we've been driving for the past couple of days, which looks like it is not from this planet basically. Mm -hmm. It is this huge tower and in the middle of it there's this bright light that seems to be emitting from it and it just I don't know I can't explain what it looks like it looks like an alien spacecraft is coming down to land on earth and <laughs> I've no idea what it is it seems like it's kind of in the middle of these mountains that are surrounding Wazazat but we saw it as we came over the Atlas mountain we can still see it in the distance now so it must be absolutely huge to be able to see it from so many miles around if anyone has any idea what that might be, please let us know in the comments because I'm so fascinated to know. It doesn't look like anything that I've ever seen in my life before. Wow, what a view. Oh my gosh. What about that? Absolutely incredible. <laughs> wow. So we just ordered a tagine at the campsite that we we're at to be delivered to the van. It's just got here and this looks amazing, right? Yes, it looks absolutely immense. It's it's um, chicken and vegetables. Chicken and veg, okay. It smells incredible, doesn't it? It does, it does. It looks so pretty as well. Like, yeah. I love how these look. Okay, let's dig in. This is where we stayed last night. It's a really beautiful campsite right in the middle of the Todra Gorge and the views are just absolutely stunning pretty much everywhere you go around here. We really wish that we had longer to spend here but we just don't so we're going to head on and we're going to try and make it to Mazuga a bit later on today. And this is where we're going to leave you this week friends. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did then please hit that thumbs up button to let us know and if you're new around here and want to see more of our adventures then hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell button too so you get notified every time we post a new video. Next week we are super excited to be heading into the Sahara Desert where we'll be getting kitted out for the sand, climbing a gigantic dune and visiting an eerily empty lake. Catch you then. Tell me think about it side the most. Words got deep, it's like a swat. Making me better, you hotter than pepper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You with a big stepper who chasing a cheddar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of these